like a round of applause, please. Thank you very Thank much. You, <clears throat> this is a very, very powerful exercise for you. Particularly this part. The one up here that I think most of you, from having done this exercise over a number of years with people, struggle with is financiers. <coughs> Who would finance me? And the fact of the matter is that there are lots of people that would finance you. You just never had a conversation even around that. And it's not about going and asking for money. Yes, I know you're laughing, Maria, because we had this conversation. It's not even about going and asking them. It's about being curious about, so Dave, uh, if you were to invest money in something, what would be the type of thing that you would invest in? Just even using that as an opening question to see where they're positioned. If you ask that of 12 people over the next month, you might find that one or two of those people are potential financiers for a project that you may have on. <coughs> if you don't ask, it'll be just like Entrepreneur X Factor before the break, you'll just have to guess. And when you run out of money, it's not the best time to guess. You need to do that before. So with that, I want to share some more of Pythagoras' stuff. And, and this is um, called the 12 Tones of Wealth. We're just going to let that all line up there. And I'm just going to show you again, these 12 tones revolve around musical notes. And I'm not going to go into this in too much detail today because this is literally one full day on this whole theme, except to say, here is the root of all wealth since I have three things. Number one, your profile. In other words, what makes you tick? We have found, in doing the type of work that we do, for as long as we've done it, that there is one huge thing that stops every single person from creating wealth. And it's not that they don't know what to do. They don't know who they are. 90% of people look around, folks, because if you know who you are, 9 of the 10 other people around you do not know who they are. They know what they do. How would you define knowing who you are, Dave? I allow the energy to flow to see where there is flow or where there's a blockage. Where there is empowerment and energy and enthusiasm and sadness or low energy or non-power. And that's a big part of knowing me, is really allowing that electromagnetic force flow consciously, <coughs> and at times just laughing at it, even if laughing at it, being depressed or sad or unresourceful. And I do love that word of resourcefulness and unresourceful. Who am I? I'm an energy of resourcefulness and unresourcefulness flowing in many areas. Cool. Most people don't know who they are. You've got to know what makes you tick. You've got to know all the little, and be prepared to face them <coughs> and put your ego aside. All those little idiosyncrasies that make us different from the person sitting next to us. I'll give you one of mine. If somebody rings up, oh, Dave and I were talking about this on the weekend, if somebody rings up for me and makes an appointment for somebody, I'll go along. I'm probably never going to pick up the phone and ring it myself. The reason why? I did a lot of that when I was financial planning in my early 20s. The minute I pick up the phone and ask somebody for an interview now, I immediately go back to when I was 21 years old. That's my anchor to it. Am I, do I want to clear it? Not really. Do I know that it's part of me? Yep. So now if I wanted to go out and make appointments, I'd have to hire a secretary who made more for me. Because otherwise, if I didn't do that, I wouldn't do it. Can I change it like that? Yes. Am I interested in changing it like that? Probably not. That's because I know who I am. Number two, unique ability. This morning we talked about that. What do you do better <coughs> and with more passion than other people? You're going to see John Shackleton soon. He's a great speaker, probably one of the top four or five speakers in this country. 
How's that for an intro, John? It's not going to get any better than that. I'm just going to go, here's John later on, because I already said that now. What do you do better than almost anybody else? You need to know this about you. It's a foundation of wealth. Know you, know you, know you. And the third one, why do you exist? What's your legacy? And it's not about you're going to save China from the starving people in Africa who are going to come in to China and take all the food or anything so big, right? It doesn't have to be that big. You can just be a good parent, a good friend. We have to start playing with that idea of purpose. Purpose does change depending on where you are in your life as well. But that's the foundation. Then we go really into the structure of creating wealth, which is goals. Everybody knows this one. What do you want? How many of us actually have goals? I realized last year I don't really have any goals. One of the reasons I haven't shifted greatly myself in the last couple of years, I've pretty much done my bucket list. I run Dave one day. Dave, I said, Dave, I've ticked up every item on my bucket list. Am I going to die? <laughs> and he said, do you want it? I said, that's a good question. I'm not sure. He said, well, when you, when you answer that, maybe you'll know what's next. So I've sort of been focusing on that for a while. But some of us just don't have goals. <coughs> environment. This is not... The biggest problem with the environment is people think the environment controls you. You control the environment. Who do you want to hang out with? What do you want to do? Where do you want to do it? We selected this environment here today. We selected it because of purposes. We selected it because we've worked here before, we know that the technology works and we're not going to have any problem with that. We've got a breakout room that our VIPs are going to be joining us for lunch in. There's open areas where you guys can have discussions during a break. The tea and coffee's there all day, don't have to worry about it, who's doing what. There's certain things that are allowing us to control this environment because this is our gig. You control your environment. Your board, who's advising you? Justin Herald, Australian Entrepreneur of the Year 2005, who works with us a lot, he says this, he said, when I started in business, I was getting all this advice from my friends and it finally dawned on me why I was not getting ahead. Because they were on the doll and so was I. So who are you taking advice from? At what level are they playing the game at? Are they playing the game by sitting back, being retired and just telling you what to do? Are they playing the game by actually doing what you do? Are they doing it professionally? Are they doing it uh, nationwide? Are they doing it internationally? For me, there's no way I would have mentors that aren't international. So what are your mentors and coaches? Who's your board? Who's your advisors? A lot of my advisors are no longer alive because I use quantum techniques to tap into Pythagoras' stuff, into Alexander the Great, best guy of strategy in the world, right? I use different techniques to do that. So who are your advisors? Your network or what we call it, your playground. I don't like the word work, right? I gave up working a long time ago. So I don't want to create a work. I want to create a playground. People come to playgrounds to hang out and have fun. Networks tend to be pretty faceless these days. But you want a network of participants, not spectators. Most people create networks full of spectators. For a lot of you, that's what Facebook is. They're people watching other people. And we love to watch other people. That's why soap operas are so popular. And these days, reality TV shows. Then we go into the last five areas here. You have to have strategy. We're going to cover this one this afternoon. Um, what, are the, what is the 36 strategy? You'll see that there's only really three streams to business strategy, the wealth creation strategy. And there's only really 36 options. It becomes very simple once you know who you are which one to do. Team, who plays your game? Motivation is very simple. Motivation equals reward divided by effort. In other words, if I wanted to motivate you, I would say, guys, um, all we have to do to come on our next soul journey to France and Scotland, which is happening in September, is run up here and give Dave a hug. Certain people would just leap out of their seats, <laughs> seats run up there and give Dave a hug. I'd probably be 
first because I really want to go myself. Right? <laughs> but if I said, France and Scotland, I said, if you wanted to go to France with us, what you have to do is run to the airport and back by 4 o'clock. See, the reward doesn't match the effort that you have to put in. So you're not going to be motivated. In the first one, there's not a lot of effort that has to go in for the reward, so your motivation is going to be high. So the idea with motivation and keeping yourself motivated is to constantly give yourself rewards that match the effort. But not underneath the effort, that match the effort. Whether it be, I'm going to have Friday afternoon off, I'm going to go out for lunch with my friends, I'm going to go sailing this weekend, whatever it is that suits you. Leverage is the last, second last note of this, this uh, process. What can you leverage? Leverage is either magnifying or multiplying something. And there's no point in being in business if you can't leverage what you're doing because it becomes glass ceiling otherwise, right? You might as well get a job where you've got that glass ceiling. So you can leverage through other people's money, other people's networks, other people's time, other people's ideas, and other people's failures like Edison did when he got the patent of the light bulb, transformed it a little bit, and actually created the light bulb that we use today. And last is once you've done all of that and you go from here to here, you've created a system which is the system of you. This is how you work. And when you understand how you work at a very high level, when you've gone through that a couple of times, then it makes it so easy for you to do anything in life. Because you understand how you work. You understand what your networks are. You understand who your advisors are, where the gaps are, what environments you like to create, what goals you seek after. You understand that. Any questions? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's very, it's something we should run a two day course just on, yeah. on that. But for today, if you just look at these 12 things as being the 12 things that you need to focus on and not worry about the technology that sits behind them, which is really profound, which it would take me a long time to teach you, because it is based on music. You just do that, that'd be great. Angela, how are you? I understand the three strings and the 66 options. Yep, we're going to learn that this afternoon. Strategy is this, there are only three ways you can create wealth. You can own businesses, you can invest in property, or you can invest in share type equity and style investments. In each of those, there are only about 12 ways in which you can make money in each of those. And we're going to share that this afternoon. But for now...